all right guys welcome back to another raid shadow legends video this is ali plays uh so today we're going to be doing the tier list for the dwarves faction i've already went ahead and placed the the trash dwarves on the don't leaves for fashion wars this is only for fashion wars so don't use these guys that i placed down here i uh, just get that out of the way unfortunately there looks like there are a lot of uh champions you should not be using for faction wars <laughs> for the dwarves faction unfortunately all right so yeah so let's get started guys so the first champion is uh, Aver Ultra Mage. I don't know if I read that properly. So he's a support champion. So usually support champions are amazing for faction wars. His A1 ability actually places a poison. It's only 30% chance. But if you book it, uh, it's 45% chance to place poison. Um, not really helpful for faction wars. Uh, A2 ability. It's an AoE. This is pretty good. A AoE that has a 50% chance of placing decreased attack. It's only the weak version, but it's better than nothing. And he also places decreased speed if they are under poison. Uh, unfortunately, you can only place poison on one enemy, so you can actually place decreased speed. Uh, this is what makes Avir very good. This is this ability vitalizing potions. So he fills a tournament of all allies by 15%, and he heals all allies by 15% of his max HP. So the good news is it's based on his max HP. So you can build him with lots of HP, make him fast, and he's going to be a good healer. So healers are very important to get 63 stars in faction wars. So I think that he's good, but I don't think he's an S tier, so he's going to be an A tier champion. Right, up next is Beardle. Bell Hammer. His A1 attack has a 100% heal reduction. It's a double hit. His A2 ability is a triple hit that actually places decreased defense for two turns if the target is under heal reduction. So fortunately, that is kind of like Aver. He actually has to have heal reduction before he can actually place uh, his decreased defense. Uh, places a shield buff on his champion for three turns equal to 30% of the damage inflicted. He is attack type, so he's going to actually be placing a pretty big shield on himself. A uh, respectable shield on himself. Passive ability. Places a counterattack buff on himself for one turn at the start of each round. And he plays counterattack buff on himself for one turn at the end of their turn. That's going to be good. That's going to help place the heal reduction on the enemies. And then you can actually one by one place decreased defense. I think he's not he's not that bad. So I actually think that he's a, he's a B for faction wars. I think Aver is actually better than him. All right, so Bolt Smith is up next. He's a rare champion. Uh, he is relatively new. He, has, he barely has any reviews, only 25. Uh, his A1 ability attacks one enemy twice. And each has a 15% chance of placing decreased speed. Decreased speed is always good. Uh, plays an increased crit rate buff and increased crit damage buff on himself for two turns. And he gets an extra turn, so it's allowed him to do more damage. And he attacks one enemy, ignores 30% of the target's defense. So I actually think Bullsmith is B as well. We have Bulwark. So Bulwark is one of my favorite dwarves. His A1 attack has a weaken. It's only a weak version, though. Um, he has HP burn. HP burn doesn't really help in uh, Faction Wars. And then he actually have a, he has a 30% chance of extending the duration of all debuffs and the attack about one turn. So here's the thing. Bulwark is an amazing champion for clan boss. Or for faction wars, he is not very good. But he is usable if you can make it work. He's going to be on that tier. All right, so next up is Cudgler the Cuddler. Uh, his A1 attack, he attacks one enemy two times. And he has a 30% chance of afflicting a critical hit if the target is under decreased defense. Um, he plays a counterattack buff and increased attack buff on himself for two turns. And he grasps himself an extra turn. And then he has a 20% chance of placing decreased defense for two turns when attacking targets with higher defense than this champion. He has a 20% chance of decreasing damage taken by 20% and attacked by enemies with higher attack than this champion. So I do think he is he is pretty decent. Um, I'm going to throw him as a B tier. All right, so we got Dilgal up next. He won't attack actually has decreased speed, higher percent chance than the other champion that we saw. He has an AoE that places decreased accuracy, attacks twice. I like that. Attacks one enemy three times. Each hit has a 40% chance of placing decreased defense. So this guy looks pretty good to me. I'm actually going to make him an A-tier champion. All right, so Fod Bar, the bar is up next. He looks like a support champion, all because of glasses. And because he has a, he's a board, right? Bars are usually support. Um, anyway, so his A1 ability is a triple hit that places 100% heal reduction. Very good. He has an 80% chance of stealing two random buffs from a target. And he also has an 80% chance placing a stun for one turn if the target has no active buffs. So you basically have a very high chance of landing a stun. It can actually be 100% chance if you max it out. Uh, so this is very good. I like this ability. So it's basically strips buffs or he actually stuns somebody. That is very good. And then this is where it makes him shine. He has an AoE that actually places decreased defense. And it can be 100% chance if you max it out. AoE decreased defense is going to make him an S tier champion for Faction Wars. All right, so next up, we have Gala Longbrace. So she is one of my favorite dwarves. Um, in general, she's very good in many aspects of the game. A1 ability is a double hit that ignores 30% uh, of the target's defense, and she also places shield on herself 
Uh, the value of the shields equal 20% of the damage inflicted. She's a heavy hitter. Uh, she's going to be amazing. And this ability, we're going to go Sheer Swagger first because I actually want you guys to use this ability first if you guys are not aware. Uh, she does a triple hit and each hit ignores 25% of the target's defense. And then she gets an extra turn. And if she has full HP after using this skill, I mean, if she has full HP after using this skill, she actually goes again. So right after you use this, you use uh, Fearless Aggression where she attacks one enemy, ignores 50% of the target's defense when attacking under a shield buff. So she's going to get that shield from her Sheer Swagger ability. And then she heals herself by 50% of the damage inflicted, but she doesn't need to heal at that point. Um, but if you usually, if you you got to use this first in a fight, but then after you use uh, Fearless Aggression. Yeah, so she's amazing. Uh, she's she's self-sufficient because she can basically heal herself for massive damage. And she also has a universal aura skill increase ally attack and all does about 25%. Let me tell you something, guys. I go to Faction Wars 21, I click auto, and then I always see Gala Longbrain is actually the last uh, character standing. I mean, I already got 63 stars on Dwarf Faction Wars. So she's the last character standing, and then she ends up destroying the boss by herself, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> so she's going to be an S tier for Faction Wars. All right, so Geomancer is up next. He is actually one that I do not have. His A1 attack is an AoE with decreased accuracy, uh, which is very good just because it's an AoE. Decreased accuracy, I guess, is helpful. Um, he has an ability as A2 that removes old buffs from a, from a target enemy, then attacks them. So we got a buff strip here. Uh, steals old buffs instead of the targets under HP burn. Debuff placed by this champion. So he has to place HP burn first before he can actually strip all the buffs. And he reduces the cooldown of Quick Sound Grasp, which is this ability. We're going to go after that after. By two turns of the targets killed by the skill while under HP burn debuff. Placed by this champion. So it has to be placed by him. Um, if it wasn't, that would be pretty OP. <laughs> um, so his quicksand grasp he fully depletes the target's turn meter and it fills his turn meter by the amount that the target loses that was going to be crazy against the boss um, and then he can also place HP burn and weaken on the target for 3 turns stone guard his passive decreases the damage all allies received by 15% and he flexes that damage onto an enemy <laughs> under HP burn placed by him uh, whenever this champion is attacked he deflects 30% of the damage instead so he is very good with a universal aura skill and I don't really have to say much else. He's going to be an S tier champion. All right, so Grizzled Jarl or Jarl is up next. Uh, he's one of the OG dwarves. He was there when the faction was first released. Oh, he dropped his uh, spear. <laughs> All right, so his A1 ability has 100% heal reduction. What makes him really good is this ability right here, Ancestral Shield. He places block debuffs on all allies for one turn, and he also places increased defense for two turns. Uh, he has an AOE over here that places decreased attack on all enemies. And he decreases each target's H max HP by 30% of the damage inflicted. His defense base is damage is based on defense. He is one of the top tier um, epic champions or defense based epic champions. So Grizzle Jarl or Jarl is an S tier champion. All right, so we got Grumbler up next. A1 ability, I place a shield buff on himself equal to 10% of his max HP for two turns. Um, he has a heal reduction and he also has uh, ally protection as well as increased defense. The thing about it is everything is like minimal. So if you look at his heal reduction, it's the weak version. Uh, his ally protection and his increased defense is the weak versions. And <laughs> so overall, I think he's okay, but I don't think he's going to be a top tier. So Grumbler is actually going to be... Um, I think he is better than... What's his face? Bulwark, so we're going to place him on B. All right, so up next, we have a Hatchet Slinger. A1 ability attacks twice. And he has an 80% chance of ignoring 15% of the target's defense. If this champion has 50% HP or more or higher. I don't know why there's too many conditions. He's already, he, he seems like he sucks already. And he has a 10% chance. That's very small of placing stun. If this champion has less than 50% HP. So at that point he's probably going to be dead. So not, not very good. Oh he actually has unkillable. My bad guys. <laughs> so he plays unkillable buff on himself for two turns. And it's on a very long cooldown. Even if you book it it's going to be a very long cooldown. Uh, he has a 5% chance of counterattacking when hit. And he has a 25% chance of counterattacking when hit with a critical hit. But overall, I think he's not that good. Uh, so he's going to be over here. Usable if you can make it work. All right, so Herndig is up next. Herndig is actually amazing. Um, I could beat Faction Wars for Dwarves before I had Herndig, but not 63 stars. I was struggling on the last, uh, the last stage, stage 21. And Herndig took me over the hump. So Herndig is amazing S tier. And the reason being, he has an AoE that places decreased defense, decreased accuracy. He has this ability right here that fully depletes the target's turn meter, which also works on the boss. And he also attacks other enemies if the attack is critical. 
plays in weaken and HP burn. And his passive ability, he fills his turn meter by 10% every time he is hit. Uh, and he also fills his turn meter by 20% whenever an ally dies. Um, you don't want your allies to die unless you have a reviver. But he's very good. Also, he, he gets an extra turn and decreases the cooldown of this ability, which is amazing. After uh, he kills an enemy with his basic attack. And he he packs a punch. He's very strong. All right, so Kurzad Deepheart, a.k.a. Ganondorf. Uh, his A1 ability places decreased speed. And he places an extra hit if the attack is critical. Um, he has an AoE that each critical hit fills its turn meter by 7.5%, which is very good. Plays increased accuracy on all allies for two turns, then attacks all enemies. And he also places decreased defense for two turns. So he has an AoE decreased defense. Uh, it's only the weak version, but it is very good. And I think this guy can actually be, because he takes so many turns, I think this guy can actually be an S tier for dwarves. All right, so we got Madman up next. His A1 ability has a 50% chance of attacking all other enemies with a second hit. 30% you know, of the damage inflicted from the first hit, so it's not that, it's not that strong, man. Uh, he has an AoE over here that heals himself by 10% of the damage inflicted to the champions currently. Current HP is below 50%. If this ability was actually, not only when he's 50%, he would be better. Um, attacks one enemy will ignore 30% of the target's defense, ignores block damage and shield buffs. Uh, unfortunately, he's going to be usable if you can make it work. All right, we got Master Butcher up next. All right, so Master Butcher, he has an A1 that has a 30% chance of placing Provoke for one turn. He has another ability to place a Provoke for two turns. He plays increased crit rate buff on all allies for two turns. Also, increased attack, weak version of both. Um, his passive ability, he has two passives. When attacked, he heals allies equal to the amount of damage taken. Does not work against bosses, unfortunately. Revives random ally with full HP when the champion is killed. So you're going to have a reve. This is not going to really help you out in faction wars. I know you do have a revive. Let's say you have two revivers. It's on a six turn cooldown. But if you want to get 63 stars, and then this guy dies, you revive an ally, and then he's dead, you're still going to lose a star. So for that, I'm going to make him usable if you can actually make it work. You know what? Actually, I'm going to... Bring him a little higher because he has a revive. <laughs> I know he kills himself, but he does. It's a revive is still a revive. All right, so Molly Tankard is up next. She's very good. A1 ability with HP burn. Her best ability is actually her A2 and her A3. So she can actually place AoE Provoke on enemies. Uh, and she also places, she also has a 50% chance of placing Provoke for two turns instead. So it's either a one turn Provoke or a two turn Provoke. And she also places Reflect Damage on herself. Um, she has a revive, so revives an ally with 50% HP and fills a turn meter by 50%. She also places block damage buff on the ally for one turn. That can come in clutch. And she also fills the turn meter of all allies by 15% when she's hit. And she fills the turn meter of all allies by 25% when hit by a boss. So she is going to be an S tier champion for Faction Wars. All right, Malga Steel Girdle is up next. A1 has a 50% chance of removing one random debuff from a random ally and cannot remove a debuff from this champion. That's actually good. So she attacks one enemy and then she actually removes the random debuff. Sheer Grit replaces a shield buff on all allies equal to 20% of this champion's max HP for two turns. Also places a continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. Amazing. <laughs> uh, this is what brings her over the top. Revives two random allies with 20% HP and 20% turn meter. Also places shield buff on the revive allies for two turns equal to 30% of, of their max HP. I thought I said for of her max HP that would be even better. And then she has a universal aura skill. So yeah, she's an S-tier champion. So there we go. It's S-tier. All right, Mountain King is up next. So this guy is very hard to kill. Uh, his damage based on his HP and his attack. He ignores 50% of the target's turn meter on his A2. And then he also ignores shield and block damage buffs on his A3. He packs a punch. Uh, he increases his attack by 50% each time. He kills an enemy and he stacks up, uh, stacks up to 100%. So it resets each round. So if you get to a boss, try to make him kill the side enemies, and then he's going to deal more damage against the boss. Uh, so yeah, he's S tier just because he's very tanky, uh, very hard to kill, and he does a lot of damage. All right, so next up we have Rear Guard Sergeant. She's basically the Tayrell of the Dwarf faction. Uh, she has decreased defense on her A1. She has an AoE that places decreased attack. So hers is like the opposite of Tayrell, uh, but she actually heals by 25% of the damage inflicted. What I mean by upside, I think Tayrell has, if I recall, he has decreased attack on his A1 with an AoE decreased defense. She has a decreased AoE decreased attack with a decreased defense on her A1. <laughs> uh, she has ally protection and continuous heal. And overall, she's just uh, 
S tier champion. Also one of the OG dwarfs. All right, so Rock Breaker is up next. Tax one enemy increases champion's defense by 4% each time the skill is used. Tax up 20%. Good news, he's defense based. Uh, he has a 75% chance to place and provoke on all enemies for one turn. Also, counterattack. Yeah, an AoE provoke is amazing. And he can also decrease damage inflicted on himself by 50% each time he's attacked. Uh, so he is not S tier, but he is an A tier champion. So Rugner, I do not have Rugner. Let's see how, it, how things work out with him. Uh, let's check him out. So he has a 50% chance of placing Bleach for two turns. That can actually help you out with the heals. A2 ability, sacrifices HP equal to 50% of his max HP. And then he fills his turn by 75% plays a shield on himself equal to 20% of their max HP and the shield buff cannot be removed. The HP sacrifice will happen even if it kills his champion and will ignore shield and block damage buff. Damage based on HP. Uh, places increase attack on himself for two turns then attacks one enemy. He has a 75% chance of placing a weakened debuff on the target for two turns. Also he has a 75% chance of placing Duke's defense on the target for two turns before attacking. So we got pretty good abilities man. Decrease the cooldown of the champion's Gleam of Avarice, which is uh, the one that we just read. By one turn every time he loses 15% HP and the HP loss accumulated and tracked over multiple turns, attacks or hits, and is not affected by healing or other HP increases. Um, I, think he's, I think he's pretty good, man. I'm going to put him as an A tier. All right, Roomkeeper Daz Dirk. Support champion. I'm, I'm automatically going to assume he's, a, he's S tier, but let's find out. So he has Leech on his A1. He has an AoE... He has an increased attack for all allies and he fills the term meter by 25%. That's big in Faction Wars. If term meter manipulation removes all debuffs from all allies and heals all allies by 25% of his max HP. Also plays continuous heal buff for two turns on all allies that have a debuff removed. Uh, yeah, this guy's S tier. Runic Warder up next. Uh, double hit on his A1. Pretty basic. Uh, double hit on his A2. Each has a 30% chance of placing decreased attack. Uh, reflect damage it continues heal for all allies i think he's kind of mediocre for faction wars honestly uh, i'll put him as a b all right next up we have a weirdo looking uh dwarf he's legendary i do not have this guy but he looks he looks like he's a pretty good champion but let's see his kit uh, a1 he heals by 15 percent of the damage inflicted if his champion has 50 percent hp or less fills his turn meter by 15 percent if he has more than 50 percent hp damage based on hp um, inflicts bonus damage equal to difference in HP percentage levels between this champion and the target. Inflicts bonus damage equals difference in number of buffs on this champion and the target. Uh, that can be pretty good if you actually build him with a lot of HP. He's going to be doing a lot of damage with this Emerald Curse ability. A2 is an AoE that has an 80% chance of stealing two random buffs before attacking. Placing an extra on enemies that have any buffs left. That's actually a very strong ability. Passive. Places block damage on himself for one turn at the start of each round. Active effect blocks incoming damage and places block damage buff on this champion for one turn. And they receive a hit that would drop their HP below 30%. So he's going to be pretty hard to kill, man. Uh, so he's going to be S tier. It's all about survivability. All right, Stealth Axeman up next. Uh, basic, very basic, basic attack. Uh, reflect damage. And he can also place it on a random ally for two turns. He can also place Provoke, but it's a very low chance on two random enemies. And it heals himself by 50% of the damage taken while under reflect damage. I don't really like it. I don't like it. Um, I'm going to put him as a B. He's not He's not below, but I don't know. He's like mediocre to me. Uh, Torment the Cold. I don't really need to talk too much about this guy. Hella crowd control. Very hard to kill. Also revives when he dies. Also provokes. Also freezes. Okay, that's it. That's it. Uh, Trunda. So Trunda is going to be an S tier. She hits very hard. She also has... He's like AoE, also AoE uh, stuns. Brogni, he's going to be an S tier. He is a fusion that I did miss. Uh, he has an AoE that can remove a random buff from all enemies. Also, he has a 75% chance of removing one random debuff from all allies. Increase the value of shield buffs on all allies by 30% of the damage inflicted. Very good. Uh, block debuffs, increase attack on all allies. Also, place a shield buff on all allies. Oh, man, this is guy. How did I miss this guy, man? Shield buff cannot be removed. Uh, passive ability, whenever an ally under a shield buff is attacked, he reflects 25% of that damage inflicted. Back to the attacker, also heals the ally. Oh my gosh. How did I miss this guy? I wasn't here when the, this guy came out, man. That's unfortunate. Yeah, so this guy is an S tier. So, if you guys actually have a legendary champion for the Dwarves faction, he's going to be an S tier. He or she is going to be an S tier. Uh, there are 41 Dwarves to choose from. 
Uh, 19 of them are top tier. And then the rest are meh. So that's that kind of sucks. There are very there are a lot of dwarves that actually suck uh, in the dwarves faction, right? In this faction, but the ones that are good are actually like very very good, and they can actually make it very easy for you guys to get sixty three stars. All right, guys. So that's gonna be it for the video. Hopefully this guide, hopefully this tier list helps you in deciding who you're gonna use in faction wars. Make sure you're not going old DPS. Make sure you're not going old support. Make sure you got a nice mix. Um, and throw in some revivers, man. So make sure you guys drop a like if you guys liked the video. And also, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm Tyrone. I need everybody to subscribe to the homie Ali Al Plays. And that's non-negotiable.